I'm Tom, this is Lucy, and this is Kitty Help Desk. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about a subject that we've, I've covered before because uh, Miss Lucy here has been on a diet over most of 2022 and she is in much better shape now than she was a year ago and I've had some uh, some changes of heart about how long to really keep her on a restricted calorie diet because what I saw was that she wasn't losing any more weight. She was kind of uh, plateauing. And so I started really looking into uh, the details about what kind of calories a cat of her size and weight and disposition really needed in their lives. And what I found was that there seems to be some disagreement about that. And if you go online and you Google it, you find a lot of different information. And so I wanted to just share the information that, that I found and maybe it would help you with your cats as well because it can really be confusing. Um, the, the source that I eventually sort of settled on was the Animal Medical Center of Chicago and they have a web page that's kind of poorly formatted. So I have reformatted it as a graphic here and it really just it gives you the basics it doesn't deal in ranges so that's not entirely accurate because you know depending on a, on a pet's activity level you may find that a, an outdoor cat who's running around a lot burns up a lot more calories than an indoor cat that just sort of lounges around all day or vice versa there are outdoor cats that lounge around all day so it depends on your cat and your situation and and so you have to take all of these kinds of charts with a grain of salt, but I really liked that this chart gives a very specific sort of a, a target, and that gives you an idea of, I think of it as sort of the median within a range. So if you look at the chart, it's got the, the weight of the cat on the left side, um, and then it gives you a calorie count for kittens, neut neutered adults, Intact adults, <laughs> Lucy, can I read? Can I read my sheet, please? <laughs> uh, obese adults. That's what that is. And then it has a column for weight loss, which is if your cat is in that weight range and needs to lose some weight, then that's a good calorie target for them. And again, these are all just targets. They the the reality for your cat is probably going to vary a little bit, but. You know, it's important to look at um, what that target is in order to ascertain where your cat should be. Now, once you figure out the target, <laughs> it, it's, it's another matter to go through and sort of figure out how many calories your cat is really eating per day. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first uh, had cats and was feeding them canned food or dry food or whatever I had um, before I really knew anything about what they really needed in their diets, I thought of a can of food as that's the portion, one can, as opposed to thinking about this in terms of the calories that are in that can. And that's really where you ought to be landing on this is you really have to start paying attention to the number of calories. and. That goes for dry food too. You know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of kibble, but you know, if that's all you can afford, you can still look at that bag and, and ascertain what the calorie content is. Now with kibble, it's very important that you measure accurately. And that means getting a scale and, and not measuring by cup size, but measuring by weight. Because a difference, you know, in a cup of kibble, say you used a measuring cup, you could probably get five or 10 extra pieces of kibble or five or 10 fewer pieces of kibble and it would still look like a cup. So you really need to need to measure the weight. And, and so that can give you an accurate calorie count. Um, on these cans and on the bags of kibble, um, you're going to see 
uh, in very, very small, hard to read text. It's gonna say the calorie content uh, per kilogram and then the calorie content per can. Now it lists it as kcal, K-C-A-L-S, kcals, which is kilocalories, which is the same thing that we refer to on our food as calories. I swear, I think these the pet food industry really tries to obfuscate a lot of this information so that we're not really aware of what we're feeding our cats. And we just, that what they really want us to do is they want us just to feed what they say to feed. So like on a can like this, it'll say, uh, you know, feeding guidelines, feed two and a half cans per six to eight pounds of body weight per day. That's, that's a crazy kind of, requirement like I'm just thinking about that so you're supposed to feed two and one half cans per six to eight pounds the difference between six pounds and eight pounds that's a six pound cat if they were to go up to eight pounds that's a 33 percent increase in their body weight like that that's just not a specific enough recommendation so you want to look on there and see what the kilocalories per can are. And then you want to sort of put on your geek hat and make a spreadsheet. <laughs> you don't have to do this. You can just use a piece of paper. But I made a spreadsheet because I'm that way. <laughs> and so on my spreadsheet, I listed each food and how many calories were in a can, what size can. And then I, I also put some notes about kind of whether it had a lot of juice in it because, you know, cats all kind of prefer different things. So I just wanted to remember what each thing was. And then here's the, here's a real key. I also included every kind of treat that the cats are given every day. And I determined exactly how many treats of each type they get each day. And I make sure I don't deviate from that even during training. So like when Lucy does clicker training, she gets a particular kind of treat when she's being trained. And I never go above six or seven of those treats in a training session, um, which is fine. You need to keep training sessions like clicker training sessions need to be relatively short anyway. So, you know, it works out that way. But, you know, you want to really include treats because by the time you add them all up, they could be a significant source of calories in your cat's diet. So... The thing about these cans and the thing that is just sort of amazing, I, I just brought three different cans here from one manufacturer. These are all Blue Wilderness. Um, one is a chicken and turkey recipe in tasty gravy, which, you know, this one actually has gravy. A lot of these foods say they have gravy and there's not any gravy and the cat's are really disappointed because I'll be like, hey, you get something? No, there's no gravy. This one actually has gravy. It's real juicy. Um, then there's a duck recipe for adult cats and a chicken recipe for adult cats. And um, on each of these cans, you get a drastically different number of calories. So like the duck, and Mina eats this every day. This has 139 calories in a can. The chicken has 119 calories in a can. And the chicken and turkey has 76 calories in a can. So that the duck is almost twice as many calories in a can as the chicken and turkey. And that's probably because of all that gravy I was just talking about. So, you know, if you were just feeding by the can and you were like substituting one can for another can, your cat, if she eats this, she's going to feel kind of hungry come lunchtime. If she eats this, she might actually gain too much weight over time if she eats a lot of this. If you're just swapping them out, you know, kind of according to what you can get, because nowadays some of this stuff is harder to get than others, it just really creates a lot of problems if you look at each of these as a portion. So you really have to look at the calories. It's just the simple addition, multiplication, you know, where you figure out how many of each thing your cat gets per day, and then you total it up. And then you compare that to the daily calorie requirement for a cat, you know, at their weight and whether they're neutered or intact, obese, or you want them to lose weight. And then you target that 
number. Now you're never going <laughs> you're never going to hit that number exactly because you know the quantities, the calories, and all these different things. It never quite adds up to be exactly what you you want. But you can get in the ballpark. So just for example, um, Mina should have for her weight. She's around seven and a half pounds. For her weight, she could get you know around 200 calories a day, maybe a little more than that. And I'm feeding her 210 calories a day. And she pretty much self-regulates because that's just how Mina is. And she, she will never eat more than what she needs. She's just got that personality type and just really moderates what she eats. Uh, Lucy, on the other hand, eats kind of like a dog and will just eat anything that's put in front of her until she's just <laughs> about to pop. So um, Lucy should have, she's 18 pounds. She should have around 470 calories a day, according to this chart. And I added it all up and she's currently getting 387.2 calories a day, which is uh, about 20 calories less than the target, which is fine with me because she, I just kind of started bumping her up because she was previously getting around 290 calories a day because I had her on a weight loss program. And she just seemed like she was leveling out and she wasn't losing weight anymore. So I started bumping her back up because she was getting more and more sort of uh, aggressive about food, kind of like when I first got her. And, you know, I just don't want her behavior to revert to that. So I want to make sure, you know, part of this is making sure the cat has enough to feel happy because that's important. You know, even if they're on weight loss, if you put them on the recommended amount for weight loss on here and they are just crazy for food at that point, then add some more food to their diet. They just don't take it up to where it was before, but you can just take it down a little at a time and they will still lose weight. It just takes longer, you know, for them to get to that point. So the bottom line really is that we all just need to pay attention to what we're feeding our cats. Um, not just the ingredients, that is important and that's another video, but uh, the, the caloric content that they're getting is, is really important to their health and their well-being. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.